yes, there's no doubt Higgins is favourite. But my co-commentator Stephen Hendry knows from personal experience just how well Chris Wakelin can play. On his day, he can be unstoppable. Yeah, and I think the support has grown in confidence. Thank you, the first frame. I think he feels Chris that a break. he belongs in this company. But it's all very well believing that you've got to go out and prove it. And what a tough opponent he's got today. John Higgins, one of the all-time greats. Straight off with a tempter here to the left corner and well, you could, if you're being very aggressive, play for position on the black to the same pocket. But I imagine he's probably trying to bring the cue ball back up the table. There is room around the back of the red. And good aggressive shot. Not quite One. holding the cue ball for the black. That's a sign of confidence. And it's always nice to get that first long pot in early in the first frame and settle you down. It's another little test of cue in here. As Rob Walker alluded to in his pre-match interview with Higgins, Six. John has been really close to a, a breakthrough over the last year or so. He's lost a lot of hard-breaking matches from well in front. Just needs to re-establish that shield of self-belief. Seven. As the strong favourite for this match, you always like to stamp your authority on it as quick as possible. Just put your more inexperienced Fourth. opponent, certainly in this event, under pressure straight away by making a nice one visit win. Those wonderful 15. first two shots, the long red and the blue, has opened the way for this opportunity for John Higgins to do just that. Twenty-two. Yeah, okay, going back to that match you mentioned, Phil. <coughs> Chris Wakeham beat me, and can't remember which tournament. Anyway, two total clearances in a best of seven and an eighty-five break. It was the that last a long time. of the twenty twenty-one English Open, <laughs> Stephen, and he had scored you four hundred and fifty-two to eighteen. Thirty-one. Beautiful angle in the black here to just screw into the bunch. Doesn't have to play it with extreme pace, but you've always got the red to the right corner. Just open three or four reds here. Yeah, see, nothing too hard. Played it to perfection. The break building has always been, for me, his biggest strength. Thirty-eight. Or one of you could go down a list of strengths that John Higgins has had over the years, but. People talk about his all-round game and his safety plays, shot selection, but 39. without his savage scoring, he wouldn't have won what he has. Always plays the right shot. 40. He's in a race with Judd Trump to become the second player to a thousand centuries. 46. The first, of course, was Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's on 9-6-4 at the moment. If he gets a wriggle on, he could do it this season. Good, John. Well, 
just as I talk about his cue ball control. That's the first slip up of this visit. Cue ball's a bit closer to the cushion than he would have liked and straight on the black. This needs to be cued well. And it was. Fifty four. Fifty five. Put your cameras down, please. Thank you. You might have heard the referee admonishing a member of the audience for using a camera. 62. The referee is Brendan Moore, back with the white gloves on for the first time since he officiated the World Championship final back in the spring. He's now got a 62. new job as the tournament director on the ever-expanding and hugely successful Matchroom World Nine Ball Tour, but this week he's reverting to his old employment. Oh, just missing. The positional cannon. 70. Yeah, and what will irritate him? He's still one red away from securing the frame. Just wanted to clip that left hand red out of the way. So the frame's not one yet. But he will go back to his chair. A little bit annoyed. John Higgins, 70. Good safety shot, acknowledged by John. And he's just got to be careful, John. He's got a 70 point lead, which is obviously a very handy lead. But everything's in the open for a counter attack. Should he play a loose safety shot and leave the cue ball down this end of the table? And there it is. So what a first frame we could have here. The only thing I would say is Chris Wakeland doesn't really want to play for the black yet because if he does, it's going to go on its spot and be tied up with red that's to the left of the black spot. He wants to get rid of that red before potting the black if he can. Well, the old steeplechase shot. The only good thing about that, it went in off. Because Higgins still needs to pop one more. Yeah, he's trying to screw the cue ball back up for blue or pink. As I said, he didn't really want to play for the black at that stage. So, if John pops this red, that's a bit of a let off. Once. Higgins has played a very good frame though, hasn't he? I think he'll be delighted with the way things have gone underway. John Higgins, one.
places you don't want to be. 75 nil down to John Higgins. In behind the pink, needing snookers yourself. Not much future in that. Two four point snookers to tie. He takes five reds, five blacks. But at the very least, he'd just love to have one. get his hand on the table and pot some balls, but I uh, don't think he's, he's on anything here. Blue doesn't go to far right corner. Does it go past the pink? Doesn't look like it from this view. Wakelin won, Frim conceded first for him, John Higgins. Wakelin concedes, the Wizard has cast his first spell of the day. The cornerstone of his success, a lovely 70 break. It is day three of the Kazoo Champion of Champions. A first round Thank match between John Higgins and Chris Wakeland has got underway in a favourable manner for the Scot. Higgins qualified for this event by winning the Invitation Champion.
And talking about excellence in qualifying, that was the case also for Chris Wakelin, beating Julian Leclerc in the final of the shootout. And he did so in terrific style. He made a break of 119 any century in the shootout, any time against anyone, is a noteworthy achievement to make it in the final. Wonderful, and it was the highest break of the entire tournament. That was a rare, well, complete mishit, really, of a safety shot from John. Catching that way too thin. Target was behind the brown, and he's let Chris get his hand on the table. Cue ball on the bulk line. That's an unforced error from John Higgins. This is a better direction with the cue ball. Not quite got the snooker in all reds. Wow. Chris Wakeling. And the safety off this red will bring the black into play, hopefully. Needs that cue ball to get to the cushion, and it has done excellent pace. What that does is it stops John Higgins playing this red to left corner. Safety shot looks just as difficult. He may elect to try and pot himself out of trouble, but see now he's looking at the path the cue ball is going to take if he does go for it. I don't think there's any way out for the cue ball, so he's got to get this if he's taking it on. No attempt at the pop. Stephen, in these formative years, you practiced quite a bit with John Higgins. When he was a teenager, was it obvious he was going to be something special? Yeah, I think it was. Um, and going back to what was mentioned earlier, he was, he was a very heavy scorer even then. You could see that his cue ball control was excellent. And he wasn't afraid to just to score heavily frame after frame. Yeah, both John Higgins and Steve Maguire spent a lot of time with when they were young. And both of I believe practice in the same facility in Glasgow with Anthony McGill. So obviously they, they get tremendous match practice with each other. Foul. Chris White same four. One. Well, you could describe that as a, a shot to nothing, but by holding the cue ball in mid-table, it could be a shot to something.
Chris Wakeling for. Bordering on the elite now, Chris Wakelin, he's world number 22. Highest ever ranking was achieved earlier this year, 21. No ranking points here, but a victory over someone like John Higgins, invaluable in terms of the confidence it would provide. Make sure your phones are off or on silent, please. You're rarely going to be given anything by John Higgins. I have to force your way in, and that one worked. Well, he's come around to look at the potting angle for this brown, and it's sadly missable. I think along the cushions this week, the, the table's not as tight as some of the tables we've seen this season, so. These are the kind of shots that players perhaps think that they're worth taking on. But he's got to get it. No. It goes to the right corner pocket. Bye. Good pot on the brown. From that view, not a lot. Chris Wakelin, five. I thought he was a little unfortunate there, but following up with not the best safety. One good pot here from Higgins, and he could be away again. Yeah, he's had two or three half chances in this frame, Chris Wakelin. Put some good balls without really scoring, but this is this is a real chance now to win this frame. He's got the balls exactly where he wants them. Oh dear. Well, if he's going to win this match, he can't afford to miss those. Chris Wakelin won. I think that's obvious. Missing a ball like that, a real shock to the system for someone Eight. who over the last 
year or two has played some lovely snooker on a consistent basis. Not like him at all. Nine. I think one of the things that separates the best from the rest is the, the very best players in the world. You very rarely see them miss easy balls. I mean, you could count on one hand, almost in a season, how many of those pinks or blacks off a spot that the real top players 16. miss. And that's the secret. It's always the easy shots that cost you, never the difficult ones. And one of the reasons why John Higgins is such a it's phenomenal one. match player and has been for 30 years. He's ruthless when it comes to exploiting a bad it's mistake from the opposition. Well, that's twice he's missed a fairly straightforward cannon to the left 39. of the bunch. One in the first frame when he was on 70. And that one there was... He's just trying to flick that left red away. Didn't catch it thick enough, so... Poor shot, you have to say. John Higgins, 39. Pretty good safety shot from John. Chris can't afford to catch this thick. Important part of the frame, this. Yeah, well played. Okay, he's caught the, the bolt colour. The contact on the red was good. And John coming around to see if one of these reds next to the pink goes to the right corner. Mm, three ball plant doesn't look far away either. Can play the cue ball to the bolt cushion knowing that he's going to be on the yellow. And the plant looks like dead set. But it's all about whether he can get the first red onto it. Well spied, well sorted out, but not the ideal cue ball. John Higgins won.
Oh, another slack safety shot from John Higgins. I know it's wrong in the second frame, but that's not a stat you see often. John Higgins being completely outplayed in the safety department. Excellent shot from Chris Wilkin. May have left another shot to nothing here for John Higgins, though. This red does go to left corner. And again, yellow is waiting. He gets the cue ball to the bolt cushion. One of those shots where he was a little too close to the pocket for his own good. The red stayed there. Excellent long pot, and looking at the body language, he's been very unfortunate not to have a pot on here. And the cue ball was travelling, he must have thought I'm going to be in on either yellow or brown. He's on neither. I think definitely safety shot bringing the green into play. Somehow get the cue ball in behind the yellow. Chris Wakeman, one. Well, making contact was important there because if Wakelin pots five reds, five blacks and the yellow, which is in the open, he'd be on 61, so would still need the awkward green. Yeah, it's a problem with these thin cuts along the cushions. If you do miss them, invariably they do stay in the vicinity of the pocket. I'm not saying this is a gimme by any stretch, but it is a chance for John Higgins. It's one of those, if, if you take it on, you've got to fully commit to it and accept that if you miss it, you're going to leave things on. Moving away from the reds that are near the corner pockets, is he? I think this is the right shot. As I say, fully commit. Try not to think about what could go wrong should you miss it. Just 100% go for the pot.
one. Yeah, because the red was close to a pocket there. Don't be confused. I think that was easy. It most certainly wasn't. Yeah, he did fully commit when he finally decided on which red. Eight. Because you could see where the cue ball was ending up. Should he have missed the red? He was giving his opponent a chance. Just on the look, if he screws back, he's going to make the contact on the red in that right cushion. That's why he didn't Nine. play the deep screw. He mentioned, because it's clearly still on his mind, that he missed a multitude of 60. blacks off the spot in losing to Jordan Brown in Tianjin, China, at the International Championship last week. No such mistake today. What the lady's got doesn't mind that red going on the right cushion. He's this one. In fact, he's now 45 in front, 43 on, but Point. still needs to pot this red to stop his opponent coming back to the table. be mindful though that he's still in the, the free ball zone as it were. One snooker and a free ball could see retrieval of frame for Wakelin. That's why the disappearance of the black will please Higgins. It's definitely 2-0 now. 32. John Higgins, 32 and the frame. Indeed, Wakem remains in his chair. Halfway to defeat already. John Higgins looking good. 2-0 ahead.
Higgins, breaks of 70, 39 and 32. Thank Chris Wakelin yet frame. to get going, Chris but there's Wakelin's still time. Take your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Just thinking the last time that Chris Wakelin played John Higgins was in the first round of the European Masters in February of 2022. Wakelin threw the kitchen sink at the Scott. He made breaks of 91, 90, 78, 57 and 52 and still lost. Higgins can win in so many different ways. But the glaring Achilles heel for Higgins over the last few years, he has lost a lot of matches from positions of great strength. Can you stop taking pictures, please? There's an orange light flashing on the phone. Wycliffe has cause to be relieved there because a, a thicker contact on the brown would have left the red, the one we can see nearest the, the top right hand pocket. No doubt Chris is out playing John at the moment in the safety department, but unfortunately for Chris, you have no points for a safety shot. He's got to start converting. He's got to start scoring when he gets in. That pink in the previous frame was probably still at the back of his mind. That was an excellent shot, because I think he knew there was a red going near that left corner pocket. He needed to get a good cue ball, and he did.
Pal, in the mess. Chris Wakelin. He did the right thing to survey the situation, but we always knew it was going back. This one you would have been able to. No, this one you would have been able to. Yeah. Do we have it on the screen? No. Can we get up on the replay machine? Please? Putting the cue ball back in the accurate position is always desirable, but I think in this particular instance, it's absolutely essential. It up. Right, Aaron. Chris. A little bit of magic from the wizard. John Higgins won. Last night we saw Rob Milkins have a, a first frame setback of gargantuan proportions against Barry Hawkins and lose his concentration. In many respects, lose his determination. That's not the case with Wakelin here. Yes, it's disappointing to be 2 0 down, but he's keeping discipline. But so too is Higgins.
He's so hard to break down tactically, John Higgins. Well, John Higgins for. Well, unless he's left a plan, Stephen, I think there are worse places that cue ball could have finished. Yeah, exactly. And let's see the situation here because if that is a plan, John's having another look. Now, there you see. The only thing that he's got to do is negotiate the cue ball for the colour. Yeah, wonderful shot. Well, he couldn't play the top spin because the cue ball was going to go into the other reds and sort of stay at that black cushion end. Used the second red to sort of increase the pace of the cue ball. Get it back up the table. That was a it was an excellent little safety battle that John Higgins won. Six. Rainbow. You heard John Higgins nominate Green. It's a strange thing he's done throughout his whole career where he's, he's felt the need to nominate a colour where it was the Ten. only colour he could possibly be going for there. It's just one of the little mannerisms he's always had. And there he discovered the reactivity of this playing surface. Sk screwed that cue ball back so simply. And was forced into a, a good recovery. Doesn't want to be over the yellow. Playing the cue ball into an area there where he was always going to have the choice of red to right middle or that red near the right corner pocket. Fifteen. Once again, playing in an area where he was going to have the choice of at least a couple of reds. This is not the red he wanted to play. He wanted to play the one that's just above the black spot to the left corner. So probably stun the cue ball. Cue ball probably go across the pink spot. A couple of cushions here.
Yeah, well controlled. 21. Yeah, we always make the point repeatedly, and I'm as guilty as anyone of saying that Higgins, if he does have a, a weakness, it's sometimes when he uses the rest. But I think in the last few years, he's actually improved. Yeah, I think it's, it's relative when we say he's got a weakness in the rest because he's so good at everything else that if you miss a couple with the rest, all of a sudden you, you say that's a weakness. It's going to become a little bit trickier now in terms of positional play. The reds are not ideally situated. The one to the right, the black, is the obvious one to play for here. But after that, it starts to get a little bit more difficult. I'm saying that the angle on the pinky may play in between the two reds and the right cushion here for one to left middle. No, it's played for the red near the black. He's overhit that by quite a way. Not sure if it was a quicker bounce than expected, but if not, that was clumsy. My initial reaction, Stephen, it was a big bounce. Foul. John Higgins, 34. Chris Wakelin, four. That will greatly annoy John Higgins. He'd done so much hard work and then was scuppered. Big shot to take on. 2 0 down, 31 points behind. He felt he needed to try and make something happen. One. This frame following the pattern of the previous two, where Higgins needed more than one opportunity to seal it. 17. Yeah, it looks like that very easy pink in the middle that Chris missed in the last frame when he got in with that great chance is, is going to be the one of the deciding shots. Certainly of these first three frames, but possibly the match. 24. You can't afford to throw up these opportunities against these players, the top players in the world. Especially 25. in best of seven. <laughs> 32.
John Higgins, 40, and the French. Solid, if not spectacular. John Higgins has one foot in the quarterfinals of the Kazoo Champion of Champions. He leads 3-0. John Higgins there on the poster and no doubt inwardly. Thank you, frame four. Out in the arena, he leads Chris Wakelin 3 0. One more required <coughs> to go through and to put his feet up until this evening. Yeah. Two winners of the first two groups have both played first in the afternoon. Mm, has he got cover? I don't think so. If you're in practice, you play this red and send the cue ball into the main bunch at pace and sort of seven, eight times out of ten, you land on the black. It would be a very aggressive way of playing this. The other way is to play it with left-hand side, check side, to avoid the bunch, send the cue ball back up the table. Trying to screw around the back of the black. Yeah, nice to do so. One thing with that shot, you put so much One. pace to get the cue ball around the back of the black that you lose control of it. As you can see there, it's not in a colour. Green ball. John Higgins won.
I miss. Chris Wyglin's debut Lovely. in the Champion of Champions rapidly transforming into a baptism of fire. One. that field swerve shot going to be the last Eight. shot that Chris Wakeland plays in this champion of champions this is a decent situation I can see five reds available four in the open there's a red at the bottom of the bunch goes to right corner so no need to unless you get the, the perfect angle no need to go into the reds yet for John Higgins nine Given what's happened to Higgins this season, he'll want to put the lid on this as quickly as possible. English Open semi-final, he lost 6-5 to Judd Trump from 5-2 up. Semi-final of the European Masters, again 6-5 to Trump, after leading 3-0, 4-2 and 5-4. Quarter-final of the Shanghai Masters, 70. lost 6-5 to Ronnie O'Sullivan, again from five two ahead those kind of reverses stay with you twenty four Twenty-five. I may choose to go into the bunch here. The red that's sort of sticking out to the left of them, closest to the black. If you can get the screw into that one, or the one above it, the joint of the pack. I decided to play for it to left middle. That would have been a great way to go into them. As I said, it, 32. He wants to get rid of these open reds first. These are not easy into the middle pockets. Thirty-three. Again, he's got the choice. I always prefer to go into the bunch when there is one loose red because it kind of gives you a little bit of insurance. So, in playing all the loose reds he's now needs 40. an angle on the next color as you can see no more reds available so this is the big 41. shot now if this goes well it's match over This shot not quite as straightforward as it might appear. No, it's in though. He could be on the way to winning. Fifty-three. 
54. Yellow ball. Bread near the right middle is not potable, so we need another cannon here to keep this break going. This looks perfect. He's got one to the left middle. 56. A little bit unlucky there, actually. Played the shot perfectly. A little bit unfortunate for the straightforward shot, but he does have this red to the left middle, as I said. Not sure if black's available to right corner. The red's missed, though. So a reprieve John Higgins, 56. for Chris Wakeland. And John Higgins knuckles the table in his way by with frustration. He wanted to win the match right there and then. He was unlucky with the split of the Reds, no doubt. But suddenly, Wakelin has a, a degree of hope. Has to play the cannon into the pink here to kill the pace of the cue ball and obviously bring that other red into the open. Missed it. Missed the cannon. Red over left middle still pots, but he's got no control virtually over Six. the cue ball. Seven. He's enjoyed very little quality table time in this match, Wakelin. So to make a clearance here would be asking an awful lot. Yeah, that was a beautiful cannon that he didn't play, but he got on the blue. Well, as I said, he didn't have much control of the cue ball with that cut to the left middle. Not straightforward, this possible clearance by any stretch. Thirty. Yeah, he's just looking to where the cue ball just wants to brush past the pink with his faintest of touches really because he doesn't want to put the pink safe he doesn't want to get a heavy contact on it he's got plenty of points in hand he doesn't necessarily need to have pinks and blacks with every red Missed it again, Mr. Cannon. And now, where's the next red coming from? Unless he drops the blue in dead weight, plays for a double. Could be end of break after this next colour. I suppose another possibility is potting the blue in. Laying the snooker, the red that's next to the pink, pushing that red away and cue ball behind the pink. And it's the it's the first choice. It's the double. It's looked pretty straightforward. Francis. The only problem, as we always say with these, is if you miss it, you've got no idea where the red's gonna end up. 
a lot of players have seen these kind of shots come up quite straight, so if that's the case, he might well hit the, the near jaw. Yep. Chris Whiteley, 26. No damage done in terms of leaving a pot on. Could be in a bit of trouble. The next shot, though, Chris Wakelin. Hmm. Okay, the red is... It's not on, really, to the right middle pocket, but John didn't really want to open that pink and red up. Another good safety. That's been a, a common feature of Wakeland's game today. Top of John Higgins' wish list here to have at least one colour safe, but there's nothing remotely safe. Wow. Chris Wakelin for. Well, that was an absolutely fabulous in off for John Higgins there. Cue ball stays on this end of the table. And he's left everything on for Chris Wakelin. Been around to look at the pot and angle for the red near the cushion, but as I mentioned before, you take that on and miss it, you leave it over the pocket. from John Higgins. Very, very good. Hmm. Is that the shot that paves the way for John Higgins to win this match? That was phenomenal safety shot. The kind of shot that would have Alan McManus purring away up in the green room with every justification.
trying to get them behind the yellow here. Playing shots of that LQ. Place your full trust in the table. Higgins anywhere but there. Green ball. John Higgins. So needs a lot of help here. Chris Wakeland, no problem hitting the red, but has to get it safe. There's an outside chance he could get a snooker back here. He sends the red up to the bulk end. Green and pink are in a handy position. Send the red up somewhere towards the yellow and brown. Well, he's got it safe. But when John Higgins has the tactical edge, it's very tough to wrest that away from him. chance he's been knocking this type of shot in pretty regularly this afternoon And now for Higgins, this is frame and match ball. You know, if Wakeland could somehow salvage this frame, things might change here, given the recent history of Higgins' defeats from well in front.
Yeah, another fabulous safety shot. And you know, you'd have to say there's a long line of them this afternoon. And boy, did he need the cover from the yellow there. Could pot this. One. John Higgins swerving his way to success. <laughs> well, we think he swerved his way to success. <laughs> Two snookers required. Let's assume, and it's a pretty fair assumption, that Wakelin does lose 4-0. How often do you see someone play such good safety and be whitewashed? Yeah, my, as I always say, I mean, you don't get any points for safety shots. I mean, it's, it's you know, that I go back to that pink in the middle of the second frame. Those are the, the easy shots that decide these matches. But it's definitely... A a part of his game, 91% to 81%. He's, he's dominated John, but it looks like he's going to lose 4 0. So. When Higgins came through the first round of last year's event, he beat Hossein Vafai 4-2, finishing off with a century. This frame a little more stressful. Chris Wakeling too. Of course, Wakelin could pot green, brown and blue. That would leave him needing one snooker on the pink to force a respotted black. But getting down to the last two colours, your chances of doing that, very low. Chris Wakelin, three.
Wow. It's over now. John Higgins completes a 4 0 victory. He gets his Kazoo Champion of Champions campaign off to an agreeable start without being at his best.